I'd like to start with a simple question. How can you find your way in a complex landscape if you can only observe things through a telescope? Well, it's difficult if you only have a telescope. Let me, let me illustrate this. If you can only observe this, which looks like a desert to me, th th there is a bigger picture underneath, uh, and this, uh, and this, and this, well, it's very difficult to become, to become aware of the global picture of the problem you're facing. And unless you spend an awful lot of time looking and observing a bit everywhere, there's a big chance that you, that you will miss something important, something really important. So we have a problem there. And I work in the field of modeling and computer simulation where we have kind of the same telescope issue. You probably have all seen such pictures with many colors that come out of computer simulation. And we don't do simply produce such nice pictures to, well, to make them and contribute to the greenhouse effect, but we try to answer some questions that we believe are important. Unfortunately, a single simulation like this one is like a telescope image. It doesn't give the global picture. So, for example, let's consider this concrete building for which you want to know some important answer, like, is it safe to be in this room under thousands of tons of concrete above us? Well, with some simplifications, we can write mathematical formulas that will describe the behavior of the building which you will solve on a big computer to get some answer. But there, you should not forget that the m computational model you have is wrong because this, mo this building is way too complex to be reduced to some equations. Even a tiny grain of concrete is too complex if you want to describe it accurately. And even the numbers that the computer is producing, well, they are wrong because the computer cannot compute with an infinite precision. But despite all this wrongness. Well, we try to make some sense out of the result and decide if it's safe to be here. So there's a famous sentence by George Box who said, all models are wrong, but some of them are useful. A and therefore, you should understand that in this case, we should not rate our success by how well we can solve we can compute the solution to a single problem, but by how well we can make a decision based on the simulations we can do and which are wrong anyway. So in order to make a decision, well, we, we often need the global picture. I mean, we need to understand all ends of the problem and their respective influence. For example, if I want to build the perfect building, like this one. It's maybe not perfect, but the perfect building. Well, you need more than a computer that will tell you if the building will hold or not if I make all walls 30 centimeters thick. No. In order to make the best, really the best building, what I need is something that will tell me how the building will hold and not for a single thickness, but for all possible combinations of all possible thicknesses of any walls. And then I can make a decision based on technological cost and safety criteria. The problem is that in many cases, well, the global picture is really, really big. For example, take the simple example of this expensive German car, okay? If, what are the possible scenarios for this car? If I want to buy one, or if I want to make a brochure, I'd like to consider all possible variations of that car. Color, choice for the tires, for the engines, and every many, many, many other choice. And if you count all possible, all possible cars that that one can build with these options. How many possibilities do you think you have? 100? 1,000? 
more? Well, for this car, I, I, I tried to count, so m my count might be wrong because I did it myself, okay? But there is about this number of possibilities. It's huge. And with this number of, of cars, you can make a single line that is 10,000 times the size of our galaxy. Uh, and I assume that a car is only one meter long. Okay. So, and this is why on the website of this car maker, wh when I went there to, to, to try to count this, each time you change some option, well, you wait some second and you see again on the screen the specific car for the specific options that you chose. So once more you're looking at things through a telescope. One case, one possibility at a time. Because there are too many possibilities. And this explosion of the number of possibilities, well, it's often referred to as the curse of dimensionality. And with many computer models, it's the same. There are simply too many parameters to explore all possibilities one after the other. And while well, you might think that the increase of com computer speed will help us, not really. And this is simply because engineers and scientists, well, we're a bit like kids. If we have a bigger hammer than a computer, well, we just want to try bigger nails. So computer models, they're always on the limit of what we can compute. So it's impossible to explore everything in turn. So how can we make things more usable for the final user? Can we think of ways to go from complex models and equations to something that is useful for the final user and that might give him the big picture. So I'd like to go back 130 years in time for a while, forget computers and everything technological, and present a tool that might provide some answer. Okay. In that time, before GPS, Global Positioning System, existed, well, a big problem faced by ships was to find the geographic north. Okay? Because it's even if you have a compass, it's well known that a compass doesn't point to the north. There are at least two reasons for this. First is that the magnetic north well, is not aligned with the geographic north, and the magnetic field varies from place to place. The second reason is that the ship itself, well, it's made of metal, which will perturb the compass needle. So there is a problem there. Nevertheless, it's possible to compute the compass correction to find the north. The problem is that there are some trigonometric formulas, and these formulas would really frighten the average sailor. So how could they do? So in 1885, the French engineer Charles Lallemand designed this object. It's called a nomogram. You can think of it as a graphical calculator. It's specific for the ship Le Triomphe, and you don't need any trigonometry. If you simply learn how to draw a few lines, well, li like these ones here, well, you can read there the compass correction depending on where you are on Earth. A and you don't need trigonometry, nothing, just a few lines. The number you read there, well, it's approximate because this is a drawing, but the nice thing is that the nomogram itself, it contains all possible, it contains the answer for all possible longitudes and latitudes anywhere on Earth. And this is, in my opinion, a stunning example of what might be the road from advanced scientific results and formulas to their practical use by anyone. So let's see how to build a nomogram for a simpler problem. Well, you all know that temperature can be expressed either in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, well, the conversion formula there is n not too friendly. Okay. So if you remember some mathematics, you, you could know that a more visual way to represent this formula, well, it's the following. Here we have a line that represents all possible temperatures as a function of Celsius and Fahrenheit. 
And this already provides you with a simple mean of converting Celsius and Fahrenheit. You simply put the Celsius temperature there and read the Fahrenheit temperature there. But this diagram is still too complex because you, ha you have a line in a coordinate system and it's still too close to the mathematical formula that we use to make it. So we can only keep some elements of this diagram and make something which is usable, like this. Now you have something usable because you can simply read the temperature there and convert it there instantaneously. And you have all the corresponding temperatures on the left and right of the, uh, of the line. Now please, please think about what you would prefer for converting Celsius or Fahrenheit. This ugly formula and a calculator, or simply the nomogram that we just created, for which you can simply forget formulas, everything, and just read what you need. And also, you have a global picture of the connection between the two temperature scales. So being lazy, uh, I do prefer the second option. Of course, there is less precision. I mean, I don't have as many digits in precision as I would have with a calculator. But for practical answers, like do I need to wear gloves today? Well, I don't need like an infinite precision. A and please don't think that nomograms are really obscure artifacts almost forgotten. They are still used a lot today, for example, in the field of medicine. So, to conclude, I'd like to briefly introduce a possible version of what might be the digital age nomogram. How can we transpose this idea to the present? Well, there are ways. I, I won't go into the details because this is a topic, a hot topic of research, but there are ways to compute the solution of a problem for all possible scenarios all possible combinations of the parameters. The core idea is, once again, to forget about the telescope. You don't have to consider each scenario in turn because there are too many. You have to adopt a holistic approach and you have to embrace all the possibilities simultaneously. Of course, you lose some precision, like in the uh, Fahrenheit Celsius conversion, but you gain really, really a lot more. This is a model of a human liver with, you see in black, a tumor in there. And we have been asked to help, in order to help our trained surgeons, well, to model, to make a numerical, a computational model of the palpation of the liver. So take your finger, you push somewhere on the liver and you want to know the resistance. Maybe you could feel the tumor inside. Here again, the number of possible scenarios is huge because one can decide to push anywhere on the liver coming from any direction. So forget about that there are millions and millions of possible scenarios. So forget about computing each scenario in turn and writing everything on a hard disk. No. But it's possible if you consider the problem globally to create the computer equivalent of a nomogram a graphical calculator for this problem, where you directly compute the solution for all possible uh, combinations. You directly compute the global picture. The price you pay is a little less precision. But once you have it, you can put it on a light computing platform because it's like a drawing, it's very light. So here you have the liver on this tablet. And you forget about supercomputers and you take it with you where you need it, in the field or more, maybe more interestingly, in the surgery room. Another option, well, is to put this on a small computer and you make a virtual reality simulator of the palpation of the liver, which you can use to train surgeons, to train students. So to conclude, I'd like to say that High-performance computing is really the telescope of engineers. It lets you investigate the fine details of a specific problem, which often is very, very useful. Nevertheless, it often doesn't give you the global picture. 
And when computer simulation results have to be used by a third party for decision making, well, you need this global picture. You need something else. That is the modern equivalent of the nomogram of Charles Allemand. That provides really the global picture. And to conclude, I'd like just to ask, well, if you have to find your way, do you really need a supercomputer? Or can you simply do it, mayb maybe you can simply do it with a good drawing? Of course, making such a good drawing is again an art in itself. Thank you.